Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I am hugely honored to be speaking with Amy Deputy, who is a, a photo editor, a photographer in her own right, and is also going to be a presenter at Inspire Photo Retreats coming up in February, from February 9th through the, through the 11th, and that's going to be in Portland, Maine. Uh, and when I found out that Amy was going to be back at Inspire, I was really excited. And I am super, super excited to be able to actually sit down and speak with her this time because I don't know whether I will get that chance to actually speak with her when she's <laughs> there. Uh, I know she's scheduled to be to be mentoring other photographers. All of you who are going to be there will probably have some chance to to pitch into to get your work looked at <clears throat> and critiqued by her. And I wanted to get a chance to see, you know, who who is Amy Deputy? What is she all about? What is she going to be bringing to us at Inspire? So, Amy, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Amy, um, you know, uh, your your reputation is so vast in the in the in the photojournalism uh, sphere. You know, people know you as this uh, amazing photo editor, uh, coach, mentor, whatever you want to call it. Uh, what is? Tell us a little bit about your background. Where did you get your start in photography? Sure. Um, I started um, shooting pictures when I was about 24. I went to school in Kentucky and ended up getting a degree there. And then I did internships around the country. Um, I worked uh, the Chicago Tribune, the Sacramento Bee, um, the Register Guard, a little paper in Oregon, um, which was a little paper in Oregon. I worked a small paper in Kansas and ended up making my home out in Washington State for about a year, and then I got hired in Baltimore. And so I made my home in Baltimore and um, was a... Actually, I wasn't a very good employee. Um, I tried really hard to be a good employee, and I wore skirts and I wore little necklaces and that things hung down and high heels, but I just never was very good at it. <laughs> And I went and I photographed, you know, I went and I photographed a wedding. And this was, um, I knew sort of my time at newspapers was was over. Uh -huh. um, when I was in Baltimore, I was picture editing. And there was a picture that was many years ago of a little boy. And he was in the street in, um, I believe it was in Palestine. And he had just been shot and um, killed. And his father was carrying in his, in his arms. And I was pitching for that picture to run on A1 of the newspaper. And it was just vehement that this should be our A1 picture. And newspapers around the country ran that picture full page. And we tucked it inside where it couldn't be seen. And what I noticed is that I didn't, um, sorry, <laughs> um, I didn't Quite cry, okay. yeah. you know. And I just thought, oh, my goodness, you know, there's something that's happened. My heart, there's a way my heart is really shut down um, seeing so much. And I didn't want that. And so I went and I photographed a wedding and I felt my heart start opening back up again. No, no. And um, so I was doing weddings when I thought that photojournalism weddings were sort of my idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, you know, I never looked at wedding photographers' right. works. It was like the last thing in the world that I would ever do. And I started, this is right when the internet started going, I started seeing people's names out there that were doing this kind of work. And I looked at my boss and I said, I'm quitting in eight months. And I did. Excellent. And that's when I started my business about 15 years ago. So you're a wedding photographer. Uh, you've got this incredible background in newspapers I mean I didn't realize it was so many papers all across the US I mean that's phenomenal yeah, phenomenal um, and no wonder you know you know when you when you see an image you know how to describe it you know how to talk about it and this is one of the things I think that photographers these days don't know how to do yeah right they that's don't... what I miss so much about yeah. papers is the point where you sit with somebody and say what works about this picture and what right. doesn't right where it stops being personal like it's not about me as a photographer. It's about looking at the image and saying, does that, does that picture really work? Right. And saying, yeah. how can I do it better? And getting people's advice. How can I make this better? Yeah. Or being asked, Amy, where are you getting stuck? And it's the dialogue about um, images that is lost or has been lost for me and it, why, it, why it makes workshops and being around um, your people, mm -hmm. your tribe, right? It makes it so powerful. Absolutely, because you can really talk with people about 
well, you might try this, or what's holding you back, or I've tried this. And it's, you know, David Murray and I are doing the, the, the reviews, That's and right. I think it's called the portfolio critique. That's but right. I really, really, really don't like that word critique because it's not about going and saying, this works, that doesn't work, this works. It's about, okay, what are you trying to say? So once you get past the place of your technical things, is it in focus, right. well lit, all these sort of basics, then you start moving into the really the fun part of photo editing is what is this image trying to say? Indeed. And is it saying it well? And what is the photographer's point of view? That's the really exciting, you know, image review is how is that photographer's voice coming through the work? Mm. And, you know, I struggle with that every day with weddings. And I'm actually a... a, a it continues to be a, a a growing process for me too. Of what am I saying? How am I saying it? What didn't I do right? Where did I get challenged? How could I have done that better? Right, right. I mean, all of these things, uh, you know, come naturally for you and perhaps David Murray because of your backgrounds in photojournalism right. and having to deal with photo editors and. You know, really, you pitching the sto that that the story about the Palestinian boy is just amazing. It's just you know, mm -hmm. I, I can feel it, even though this was many many <laughs> years ago. You know, because I, I was in the I worked in the newsroom as well, and I yeah. I've also had those conversations that are hard, and sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, kind of thing. You know, um, when it comes to wedding photographers, there's uh, you know, uh, and I'm generalizing, unfortunately, but there's a sense that you know. They, they have to go out and shoot the details and, yeah. you know, and shoot, shoot things that are, are, are flat emotionally for me, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, and how do you um, over, overcome that? How do you overcome the, the immense pull there, there is in this industry to show what everybody else shows and do something so different that is... That is your. I mean, one of the guys that I love is Fernando Waristi. I don't mm -hmm. know if you know Fernando's work. Yeah. Oh, Fernando is from uh, Mexico. His oh yes, yeah, and Fur. Fur, yeah, yes, yeah. I yes. call him Fernando because I, yeah, I love the name <laughs> Fernando. But Fur's work is uh, just. I love it. You know, it's just when you look at it, you go. There, there's intent, vision. Everything comes together so beautifully, and he doesn't care what you know. His, even his clients think of his work. He just does yeah. it for him, you know? And where do we, how do we go from, we're doing this only for clients and we're going to be mass producing the same images, wedding after wedding after wedding, to moving to let's find our groove, you know? I think that's a really hard question and I'm not sure that I'm going to give you a very exciting answer. That doesn't have to be exciting. But I think there's a, there's two things, you know, in newspapers we learned to cover your ass yep. and then have fun. So there's always a way that I'm working for the client. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Um, I can't see you on the screen. And Oops. Working for my clients. And, you know, they've spent a lot of money on these things that perhaps to me aren't that important or not that exciting to photograph, but it's a part of my job is to show these little pieces of details that are important to them. Sure. Oops. That's the way that I, you know, that I see the thing with the, the, the details. This is just something that I need, need to provide for them. Um, and I look at it like this. I got married 20 some years ago and I, only hired photojournalists when I was school back in Western Kentucky University. And I don't have one picture of me, my sister, my mom, my dad, my then husband, and his parents just smiling at the camera. Not one picture, mm. you know? And I don't have one picture of my dad and I dancing where you can see both our faces. Right, right. You know, my dad's dying of cancer. Mm. I divorced. Mm. And my sister's very sick. Oh, wow. You know, so, yeah, I do think it's really about the cool vision. And that's really awesome. But it's also, as a photographer, I'm making things that are records for people. Right. 
20 years later. And maybe as a photographer, they're not going to be all that exciting for me. But if I'm going to do a group shot, I want to do it well. Sure. You know, maybe the flowers and the glasses aren't all that exciting for me. But you know what? There's a person behind those flowers that spent a whole heck of a lot of time creating them. And there's a lot of time and decision that was put into what flowers are even on the paper. That's my job to show that. You know, it's not very sexy. Right. But it's, I don't know, you know, it's the full circle. And then I go out and have fun and do that. But then there's also these places that are slow down and stagnant. And you want to still have them have a sense of um, a f- sense of presence and being there. And that I'm really honoring the choices that someone has made. And that's my job to photograph them. That, so. that's, a, that's a phenomenal answer. I, do, I wasn't expecting that. But that, thank you very much for, for uh, explaining to me how you would approach it. Um, when it comes to events like Inspire, you've mm-hmm. been to it before. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, the reason you're going back uh, could be many, you know, but what one thing get, draws you back to Inspire every year? Oh, it's Anna Grazier. <laughs> All right. Anna and Matt awesome. and Mark They're and awesome. Carla. Yeah. And it's a good group of people, great group of people, right? You know, the people from Shoot.edit, the small handful of, of hand-picked vendors that um, they don't feel like they're salespeople that are like trying to lure you in with their stuff. They feel like they're people that are really there to help you improve your business. The quality of the speakers, how it's approachable, the care. You know, you talk about those little detail pictures mm. and then how, you know, they're not that important. Well, when I go to Inspire and there's beautiful flowers on the table and a beautiful welcome card and a beautiful bag and a beautiful welcome bag and all the little details that they put in to make me and everyone else there feel welcome, it's just overwhelming. The quality of the food, the quality of the service. And, you know, and it's in that same way in weddings, really. Our clients are making their choices on the quality. They're creating things because they want to give that as much for themselves, but also as a gift for their guests, you know, that have come there to honor them. And I think that, you know, earlier, earlier in my, my shooting career with weddings, I think I'm looking at the work. There's a way that I wanted my pictures to be so kind of, um, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know. It's, I'm kind of, I kind of got lost here. I think I've softened on what's the right way and what's the wrong way to have a wedding. And, and, you know, if I can capture some pictures that show some, that move people and that show a little bit of a way that we're all connected together. Mm -hmm. Right. It's really wonderful. And it sometimes I think it feels like clever has replaced heart. Ah. You know? Wow. We've got so clever and so fancy and and artsy and that's great. I love that. It's eye candy. But what happens with the pictures that make me feel something? How, what happens with that, that little Israeli or the little Palestinian boy, you know? Sure, sure. What's the picture that, you know, connects me to you where we don't have to say a word, but we only do it with the place that we feel something? And that, to have a shared feeling together right. without being have to say a single word, that's a gift. You know, yeah, so there's is. intellectual appreciation, and then there's something that resonates even deeper in that the only place it can come from is the heart. And that's the way that I want to make pictures. <laughs> you know, I want to keep opening up this, my little areas of me that are cranky and grumpy and complainy and, you know, get back to what matters, which is the place of gratitude for this great miracle that we're even alive. And we all do it in different languages. So I'm not saying yeah. that, but I'm just saying for me, what works is, um, trying to find that place where there's a, there's a place where we connect, where we connect in the invisible silence, you know? That's beautiful. Uh, 
I'm going to put you on the spot because I think people will go, wow, that sounds great, but how do I do it? How do I do it? I know how, how do Amy do, Debbie <coughs> does right. it because she's just explained to me that's what's important to her. But let's say I want to center myself and and really deliver the same sort of experience, I guess, for my client. I want to be able to. I want you're to not able- gonna. You're not gonna be able to because you're not me. That's right. 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 True. So you're gonna do it in your own way. Ah, yes. And that is what I, as a mentor, or whatever, is what I want to support you in. If you want to go in and do the heart, heart, see, heart, see, lovey, lovey, lovey stuff, I can support you in that. If that's just not your thing, yeah. and you see th- you see the world in a much more sort of geometric, um, incredible diagram and mosaic of color and light then let me help you support you in that way. If you see things in an incredibly graphic way, or you're, so it doesn't matter. I mean, that's to me what works for me and where I, where I come from. Gotcha. Every photographer is going to come from a different place. Right. You know, and I'm going to have my biases. Indeed. Uh, Amy, uh, I promised you this is going to be a short Ooh. one because uh, you're, can you hear me? Okay, go. I said this is going to be a short conversation, but it's already been over 15 minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, don't apologize. <laughs> um, I, I can't wait to see you at, at Inspire. I know others who are going to be watch, watching this video are also going to feel the same way. Uh, you have this really warm glow about you that's you know really amazing. Uh, it's great to hear that you're mentoring people, not just at Inspire, but Outside of Inspire, I imagine uh, you are you you meet with people perhaps through Skype. I don't know. Uh, not are, much. Not, I'm pretty. Um, is it more uh, one on one? Fairly reclusive. Okay. I'm pretty reclusive, as you can notice when you look at my blog post, and I think the last blog post is a couple years ago. So, you know, whether it's reclusive or massive disorganization, I'm not sure which. It's a, probably a little bit of both, gotcha. but. Um, do I'm doing you, a little teaching uh, locally, so okay, I'm excited great. about that. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, folks, this is Amy Deputy, who is a wedding photographer. Uh, uh, she's going to be, I, I, I know you don't like the word critiquing, but she's going to be giving you feedback <laughs> at, Insp- at Inspire. Is that, yeah. is that fair enough? Yeah. <laughs> uh, feedback on your work. So please feel free to sign up. I think you do have to sign up for these photo critiques, portfolio critiques. Um, well, you know, I'm sorry to interrupt real quick. Sure. But we want, the reason we want people to early sign yes, up absolutely. is so that we can look at the images and really develop a critique and w- that's really precise. Absolutely. With um, and to have the opportunity to ask questions and start a dialogue prior to that that public session. Absolutely, and so it's a little bit more than just the public. Indeed, we're hoping. indeed, and you're working with David Murray, who we've already interviewed, and who's been a who's just amazing in in his own way. I mean, just uh, just a warm another warm guy. I mean, really, what is up with Inspire? All, all these really great yeah. people coming there. Um, you're both going to be talking to people and giving them feedback and making them grow, making yeah. them be better photographers. I mean, good Lord, who does that these days, right? You can't get it on the Internet. This is how you do it. Go and talk to Amy Deputy and David Murray and get your portfolio critiqued, right? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Amy. Thanks for joining yeah. me today. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.